Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, in the presence of his majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for your intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to Glory God in the highest, highest and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Sibulan and the land of Naphtali, but in the end he glorified the seaward route, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulders, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm responds, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Paulus, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. 
Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human elegance, but that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to our Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth, went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon and Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in the land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. As he walk, was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets, followed him, walked along there, and saw two other brothers, James, and son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father, and followed him. He went around all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, my friends, and I hope everybody's January is going well. In our gospel today, we hear, as we come into the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear uh, Jesus now beginning his ministry. John has been arrested. He's beginning his ministry, and he decides to go to Galilee, to Galilee of the Gentiles, uh, to begin his message. It was called Galilee of the Gentiles because it was literally surrounded by uh, Gentile villages, Galilee itself. And it's very interesting that Christ begins his message in Galilee because it would be much, fer uh, much more fertile ground uh, for his message up there. Because Galilee, it was always said, all roads lead, to Gal lead through Galilee. You know how they say all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead through Galilee. Uh, and the people there were a, a hardier breed, a tougher group of people. They had to be because, again, they're surrounded by the Gentiles, but they're also exposed to many different ideas. And so Christ knows that this is the place to begin to bring his, his, his good news, to bring his ministry to a beginning, because this is it. This is the people who will be most open to listening to him. And they're a hardier group of people. Again, they have to be because they're surrounded by the Gentiles. So they're, they're open to these new ideas. And who does he start with? Who's he call first? But he calls fishermen. And it's interesting that he calls them because their very occupation gives them the, the virtues of that occupation, the strength of that occupation. And it's what they can bring to the ministry in spreading the gospel and the good news. You know, what do you think of when you think of a fisherman? It's somebody who has to be patient. It's somebody who has to know how to persevere. It's somebody who has to have great courage. It just takes great courage to go out on those boats. But it's also somebody who has to be able to read the signs. You know, when is it safe to go out? When is it not safe to go out? You have to be able to, to read that for your own safety. And so these are the virtues that they have as part of their occupation that will make them uh, productive apostles. And I love how he, caught, he has two of them, you know, when he first calls, it's uh, Simon, uh, Peter, and Andrew, Simon, Peter, and Andrew. Uh, he calls them two, and they're fishing, and James and John are mending. And that really is also part of being an apostle, being a follower of Christ. They are going to be fishing, but they also have to mend. Uh, and when they bring people to Christ, they also have to help them mend 
their lives and help Christ, you know, mend lives of those. And we see that in the gospel so beautifully at the end, where as Jesus has them as followers, he now goes around and what's the last two lines? Teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel, he's fishing and curing every disease and illness among the people. He's mending. My friends, we are called to be followers of Christ just like that. You know, to have that patience, to have that perseverance, courage. You know, know how to read the signs uh, of people we're trying to help, but also be people who are fishermen, but also know how to help people to mend their lives when we bring them to Christ. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon the Almighty Father who sent his Son to preach the coming of the kingdom. In confidence, we offer our prayers before the throne of the Most High God. For the church, especially during this week of prayer for Christian unity, that the Lord may direct and strengthen our dialogue and collaboration and lead all Christians to be one in faith, hope, and charity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public officials, that the day of prayer for the legal protection of unborn Christians may bear good fruit in our nation and in our laws, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a world torn by sin and strife, the people of God may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and conquer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the homeless, and those who are hungry or lonely or unemployed, that the mercy of God will raise them up, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may come to enjoy the vision of God face to face, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to respond generously to the call of Christian discipleship, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon. And may those who have seen war or violence find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, may the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight. For we make them with trust in your love and goodness. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Amen. forever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with, all, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace Christ. Christ. Let me see. 
Lamb of God. God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my, my roof, but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. Look toward the Lord and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. At this time, we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may now always may we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone.